lifestyle talk. Um, so to me, Ruby on Elves encompasses many wonderful things. It's, you know, obviously we're here to talk about Ruby, but we also obviously like beer. And um, I'm going to focus on the third thing that creates the Ruby on Elves lifestyle, and that's freshies. So this is going to be a bit of a, a motivational talk of sorts, or so I think. And so my vision when I was when I was kind of thinking how I'd give this talk and how you guys react to it, I kind of pictured myself being Tony Robbins. Like I was gonna go out and bleach my teeth and have this really huge smile. But really what it comes down to is I'm just drunk and <laughs> half of you are gonna stare at your laptops the whole time. That's cool, because it's a Ruby conference. So yeah, I'm here to tell a story. The story is about me, so it might be a little bit boring to some of you. But really what I'm hoping to do is inspire you guys a little bit and uh, to, to seek out the things that you're passionate about and hopefully try to combine them into something maybe with your code and go write some cool stuff and just really enjoy what you're doing. And I also want to leave extra time at the end of my presentation so you guys can get more beer. <clears throat> okay, so what the hell are freshies? Who knows what freshies are? Yeah, <laughs> okay, so freshies are outside the door right now. It's the wonderful fresh snow that's fallen on Ben. And so in a ski town like this, it's all about shredding the gnar, getting some freshies. And it's approaching this, this slope with its pristine snow that hasn't been touched yet, and then just slashing the hell out of it and leaving some tracks behind. So uh, that's what freshies are. And it also is the third powerful element that creates Ruby on Hill. So up there you got the beer, obviously. You got the ruby, and then there's that kind of funky looking cone thing in the background. That's, uh, that's supposed to be Mount Bachelor, I think. And maybe if it clears up, you're going to see that. So I'm going to talk about that. So really what happens when these three powers combine is I achieve my happy place. And uh, you know, I just enjoy beer. Uh, I, I do like to write code, albeit not fantastic sometimes, as I think Stephen Baker's going to talk about tomorrow, some of my code. And I also like to write freshies. Um, and so to kind of give some background about, about this and to hopefully inspire you, I'm going to go over my whole Facebook timeline. <clears throat> Back in 1999, I was graduating from the University of Washington. Any other Huskies in the crowd here? Yeah. You're in the land of ducks. It sucks, but yeah, go Huskies. Uh, I was a business major at UW. I took a lot of HR classes because that's where all the chicks were in. <laughs> and I also had a job at Vizio and, uh, and ended up at Microsoft. And, and so when I was at college, here's, here's this cool graph. My life consisted primarily of beer. I love doing stuff in the outdoors, and I was trying to chase girls. Um, and then I graduated, and then I got my first job, and it was at Microsoft. And the first product I worked on was Windows Millennium Edition. Oh, that was your fault, too? <laughs> exactly. I also like to show this. Um, where that arrow's pointing is my strike price. <laughs> that looks like mine at Symantec. Um, and, and I don't know if I'm the, the cause of the the sharp downfall after that? Why possibly? I don't know. So uh, because of that, I moved down here to Bend, Oregon in 2001. And uh, the reason I came here, it's pretty obvious for anybody that loves the outdoors. There's awesome things to do here. It's beautiful. Uh, there wasn't quite as much beer back then, but there was some good beer. And I came down here to work at Mount Bachelor Ski Resort. I took around a 50% pay cut to work up there, and I was the IT manager something or another. And while I was up at Mount Bachelor, I met uh, this guy who's actually in the crowd right now, Chris Springer. Back here in the corner. <laughs> he doesn't have quite as much hair, but uh, yeah, he, he, uh, when I was working up there, he uh, slanged some PHP code for me. He, he did these little, little apps for me, and he actually taught me some PHP. And that's when, uh, when my budding programming career <laughs> began, which is super funny. Uh, so up at Mount Bachelor, um, my life consisted mainly of, of, of a big portion of freshies, not so much beer, and uh, writing some code, but also doing a lot of Windows administration, which was pretty boring. Over the years, um, I kind of climbed the corporate ladder to ski resort, which really doesn't mean much. I, I think my final title was Senior Director of, uh, crap, what was it? 
was it, it was it was so ridiculous. I can't even remember. But like resort systems or something. And I was in line to get this uh, this baller. Uh, Chevy pickup truck and everything and that was pretty cool, but my life I came there, you know to, to get the freshies and shred the gnar But all of a sudden all I was doing was was going to bullshit meetings all day long and because of that I started drinking a lot more, too <laughs> And the final thing that happened there was a period at the end of my career there where I worked three months straight without a single day off I shouldn't you not um, Anybody that, that's skewed up a Mount Bachelor, you know that the gate system up there I was in charge of replacing that, and it was it was hell. It was an awful project, and that's what happened. So, um, yeah, I was like, "What the hell? What happened to my lifestyle?" Uh, and that's the last comment slide in the deck here. Um, I, the sign vision myself. I wanted to be this cool dude, rolling around my snowmobile in my one piece, drinking beer, shredding the gnar, and that wasn't the case anymore. So after that, I kind of became this wandering person, and I, I, I started to go program some more. I dabbled in something called Cake PHP. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Um, and and to, to earn money, I actually I also turned tricks. <laughs> Those are painful times. I'm sorry. And then in 2008, I uh, went to a local meeting here, a group called CowPoo, Central Oregon Web Professionals User Group, and I uh, met Chris Craybill, and he was like, hey, I got this company, uh, WorkApps called G5, you should check it out. And so that's where uh, Ruby entered my life. And G5 kicked ass. I mean, I, I was learning Ruby, which was new to me. Um, coming from PHP, um, it, was, it was just, it was mind-blowing, the stuff that I could do. And Rails was super cool. And I even got to ski a little bit. And uh, it's hard to see on the corner. The, the group of guys that worked there was hilarious. We listened to Glee all the time. That was right when Glee came out. So we'd play uh, you know, the Don't Stop Believing all the time. We listened to lots of Journey. Had 80s themed parties. It was, it was just pretty awesome. It was a really good time. Um, and, then, and then this guy came to town with a lot of money, a venture capitalist. And so then my life kind of changed. My job changed there. And once again, <laughs> All of a sudden, as Kobe kind of alluded to, I spent a lot of time on the phone with clients, which it's not really bullshit meetings, that's harsh, but it kind of was. Again, I was drinking a lot more, partially because there was a keg there. I didn't shred a lot, and all of a sudden, like the programming I love to do, I was just doing this repetitive stuff over and over again, and I kind of felt like a slave to the man. And so, after the second time of, of you know going back and evaluating my Facebook timeline, I started to see a pattern emerging of things that would really get me stoked and then kind of let me down. So I was like, you know what, this time I'm gonna learn from this. And uh, this is a really good quote, and, and this really applies to a couple of things. Um, it's by Y, and I'll let you read it, but I'll read it out. When you don't create things, you become defined by your taste rather than your ability. Your tastes only narrow and exclude people, so create. And really, I think people feel this a lot in their jobs. You go there, you kind of get in this, this rut, and you just grind away, and you start, you stop, innovating and you stop creating and and really you stop learning and being excited about things so you you know it, it's really tough for me and it's something that I've struggled with and I realized that I you know I really heart new stuff and I need to keep learning and that's a challenge for me in a job so you know keep creating keep learning and have a passion and um, <laughs> I, I for one love you know I love tender loves Twitter posts I wish he was here for, for Ruby and Ailes because it was awesome last year but I, I really love when he tweets about sausage. <laughs> because I'm immature and I think it's funny. And, <laughs> and he talks about having a sausage party all the time. And I'm like, I'm like, 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 like dude, yeah, I want to go to your sausage party. I'll try to look to Seattle for that. Um, okay, so, so I decided, you know, I have this, this new knowledge in my head. And what I decided to do was go back to, to some roots that I had that predated G G5 back when I was turning tricks with Cold Fusion. I turned some other tricks with Cake PHP, and I, I wrote uh, an e-commerce app for this place called Longboard Store, and they sell Longboard Skateboards, and uh, it's here in Bend, Oregon, cool little quirky company, and that's where I am now, working 20 hours a week, and uh, really getting cool results. And, and again, this is back to, to creating and, and, and really learning new things. I, I've, I've gotten to use new technologies, I'm using Backbone, I'm using Node. Um, I know this isn't a JS conference, but I love that stuff. And we're seeing an average of 70% increase in sales over the prior year, which is pretty sweet. And again, I have this, this fusion of all these things I'm passionate about. It's all happening. 
and uh, it's pretty sweet. And another thing that's happened since I've been able to free up my time and, and kind of my senses, I've started to go out and create some new apps. And this is the, where the pursuit of freshies comes in. So I, I, I went out and created this, this little uh, Twilio application that essentially what it does, it goes out and it scrapes uh, snowfall conditions at the local ski resorts. And then people can sign up for alerts to be sent to them when, they're new, when there's new snow that falls. And uh, it's pretty sweet. You can go and sign up and say, hey, I want to be alerted when there's, when there's like five inches of new snow, because I love that. And I also added in some, uh, <laughs> some voice stuff. So it's like this morning, my, my phone rang, but I was already awake, because my daughter woke me up at 3 in the morning. And uh, I always envision that the girl that's calling me, the Twilio robot, that she looks like that. And <laughs> she tells me that there's fresh snow at the mountain. I'm like, sweet, I'm going to go shred today. And it's, it's just, it's a fun thing. And, um, you know, here's, if anybody's a skier in the house, this is what the numbers are looking like right now around here. So it's pretty sweet. And I'm obviously just getting rich off of this thing. <laughs> Big time. Not really. I'm, I've actually spent like $30 on my Twilio account. But, you know, what, what's cool about it is, is I, you know, it's all my passions combining in one place and I'm giving back to my community. Uh, a free service, and it just makes me feel good, and it makes me stoked. And I get people coming up to me saying, actually, I had, you know, a guy come up to me at the break, he's like, hey man, I got a text message this morning. And he obviously didn't go ski, but he still felt pretty rad about it, I think. <laughs> um, another cool thing that's come of it is I, I, I've created some gems before, but I actually went out and created the first gem that I was really kind of stoked about. It's called Wooler. Wooler's the Norse god of snow, and what this will do is you can you know, feed in uh, some Latin longitude, and then it's going to return back an object with some awesome data. So here's the snow forecast for Mount Bachelor for today. 90% chance of pre precipitation, 2 to 4 inches, 22 degrees. Awesome. Wow, I'm going to go through my slide deck way too fast. Who wants to ski? Yeah, give me another beer. <laughs> yeah, one second. <laughs> so to sum it up, sum it up um, in, in the name of Anthony Robbins. Uh, really, it, what, what I've kind of found here is, is to kind of chase down your passions and, and really be in touch with them. Keep learning, give back to your community, drink beer, and shred nar. And my name is Cindy Crawford, and that was Dreaming of Fresh Sheets. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? What's nar? Nar? <laughs> okay, uh, that's that's a great question. You know, I actually I actually had an alternate presentation that I was that I was going to do. Um, and it, you know, ironically, there, there to me, there's a lot of parallels between skiing and Gnar. Uh, no, I'm not looking for uh, you're gonna ask. Um, I think there's a lot of parallels between programming and skiing. Um, and Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, if, you have, if you have some free time, uh, there, there's a there's a, a famous skier who's who's no longer with us named Shane McConkey, and he uh, he he created this game called NAR. NAR NAR is like a, a skier term. Like I'm gonna go shred the NAR, just you know, go out and get some stringer. What's what's the proper skateboard? Gnarly. Gnarly. Yeah. Gnarly. Yeah. Gnarly. Gnarly. Yeah. Gnarly. Yeah. 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 Anyways, um, if you have some time, uh, you're in a ski town, watch watch this Gnar movie. It's uh, it's an hour long, but it's hilarious. And essentially, what what Shane what Shane was trying to prove here was, uh, I'll just go ahead and play it because it's funny. Um, we're not gonna stand here for an hour, but. Uh, it really is, is that uh, that people take stuff way too seriously in skiing. You know, there's people, ironically, you know, he died jumping off of a cliff and, and trying to base jump with the skis. So, but, you know, what he was saying was that people take take their, their, their skiing too seriously, and really what it is is, is all about just having fun. So what he did is went out and created this game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there you go. So he, he thought it was he was ridiculous. So he created this game called NAR. And essentially what it is is uh, yeah, there you go. But what it when it's go it's going out and let me unplug my screen there. Uh, you can watch it on your own accord. Uh, it, it's going out and, and skiing with your friends and doing doing kind of silly stuff. So I, I guess a, a similar concept would be like 
you, 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 you earn points for skiing this really sick line and doing things like calling your mom on the phone while you're skiing it. So you, you, could, you could kind of make up your own game of NAR with your programming buddies and say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna refactor this really, this really fat method into a one-liner one because it's gnarly, and then you get points for it. Or, or you, you just call out and say things like, I'm the best programmer in this room. And you know, it's just kind of silly like that, mature <laughs> stuff. Any other questions? <laughs> no? <laughs> Define work. Um, I, I, I'm working uh, part-time, over 20 hours a week, for the longboard store and the skateboard store. It's a Rails app, and I'm, I'm the only guy, so I do full stack, front-end stuff. And, uh, and then and I, I also write code on the side, my little side project. And, and really, the thing that I enjoy most about it is, like I said, is just being able to open up myself to, you know, you get all these people coming up to you saying, hey, I have this really sweet idea for an app. You know, when you make yourself available to actually sit down and talk to some people, you realize that some people actually have some okay ideas, and, and, and really also just kind of enjoy other aspects of life. So, 20 hours a week, ish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was it like going to an 80s themed party? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> um, should I pull up Facebook? <laughs> Um, at G G5, uh, we, we threw some really cool parties there, and and the first '80s party, uh, what was it called? It was called Journey into the Man Cave, <laughs> and uh, our our initial office that, that we all all the engineers worked in was called the Man Cave, affectionately so, because it always kind of smelled a little funky. Um, and so yeah, we decided to be a little bit more social, and so we hosted hosted Journey into the Man Cave. We played lots of Journey and other '80s music, and I think we had some really cruddy beer. Uh, and people got into it. They dressed up. Girls came with side ponytails. So it was actually pretty sweet. Wasn't my favorite party, G5 though. There's a lot of other good ones. Yeah. I am a skier. Yeah. What do I ski? What do I ski? Um, I have about six different pairs of skis. AT or Tele? Uh, AT. I have uh, Fritchies and uh, Baron Dukes. Yeah. What does all that stuff you just said mean? <laughs> Son, you must not be from around here. <laughs> uh, uh, AT is, 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 is where you go ski in the backcountry. And what I was talking about was certain brand names of ski bindings that allow you to free your heel so you can free your mind. <laughs> yeah. Are you skiing Saturday or Sunday? Uh, I skied today. <laughs> Anybody that wants to go ski, yes, I will take you out skiing. I have a snowmobile. It'll be super gnar. Yeah. Do we have to be naked? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Ben Morgan. You know, we do weird stuff around here. What? 80s party? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if I was dressed up for that party or not. But I do, there, there, there's a guy that works at G5 that, that has like a closet full of costumes. If we wanted to have any sort of party right now, Is that we could look it up. Cat? <laughs> Did I not answer your question? No, okay. okay. Yeah. So I noticed that on your, your bubble charts up there that ladies disappeared as soon as it, any programming language showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo! Uh, in 2001, um, back then, one of the things that you heard when you came to Ben, was that the, the, this town was it was it was a bring your own girlfriend town? So I actually imported my girlfriend from the fine state of Washington, my college sweetheart. We got married that year, and we've been married for ten years now. Um, so she is she is still a big part, but it's like I, don't, I didn't really know how to fit that in. But definitely by 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 choosing my current lifestyle, I. Uh, I was going to say something bad about lifestyle condoms, but by choosing the current lifestyle, it definitely allows me to, to, to hang out with my wife a lot more, which is which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Any other questions? No. All right. Thanks, everybody.